Hi, this is Kanna Babu. In this video, we'll discuss about delegates and events. Before going to LinkedIn Entity Framework, we must have some basic knowledge on delegates and events. Before watching this video, you can watch my previous videos also. So, first of all, you must know what is a delegate. A delegate is a reference pointer to a method. Delegates are used to invoke the methods. Generally, in ASP.NET, methods must be invoked immediately when user uh, clicks on any button control or when user selects any item in the drop down list. So, here we are not writing any code to invoke the methods. So, internally, who is calling the method means delegate. Delegates are used to pass the method names as parameter, and delegates are used to avoid overloading. So, what are the rules to create the delegate? Rule number one Delegate can be declared inside the class or outside the class. The data type of the delegate and the data type of the method both must be same. The parameters of the delegate and the parameters of the method both must be same. We can create an object for the delegate and we can pass the method name as parameter to the delegate object. What are the steps to work with the delegate? First of all, we need to create a delegate. Syntax is access modifier, delegate, return type, delegate name, parameters. And uh, we need to create a method for the delegate. And the parameters of the delegate and the method both must be same. The return type of the delegate and the method both must be same. And then we need to create an object for the delegate and we need to pass the method name as parameter. Delegate name, object name is equals to new delegate name of method name. And invoke the delegate object by using delegate object name. So what is the difference between delegates and method overloading means? Method overloading means defining multiple methods with same name but with different parameters. In delegates we have to declare multiple methods with different names and with same parameters. Let us see some examples that how to work with this delegates. Is it clear? So here yeah, I will try to open my Visual Studio Editor. I will declare the namespace. As I told you that you can create a delegate inside the class or outside the class. I will create one delegate here. The syntax public delegate void. The name of the delegate I will give as my delegate without any parameters. I will declare a class A and here I will declare one method as i told you that we need to create a method for a delegate create a method for a delegate so the syntax for creating i want to declare one static method public static void the name i will give as m1 m1 is the static method is it clear and here i will try to write something like console dot right line of i am m, uh, i am m1 i am method one now here i will declare one main method static void main and here Step number three, create an object for a delegate. Create object for a delegate and pass method name as parameter. So how to create an object? Class name. Delegate actually internally at compile time it will convert into class. And what are the methods here written? All these methods will be entered into that particular class. That is the reason with single object reference you can invoke all the methods. Delegate name, object name is equals to new delegate name of. Here you have to pass the method name. What is my method name? M1. Now I will try to invoke the delegate object obj of. So here this is your method m1 and here you have one uh, this is your delegate. So whenever you are calling the delegate uh, object it, it will invoke the uh, method. Is it clear? So your output is something like I am m1. Hope you understood. And a delegate can invoke multiple methods also. For example if I declare one more method here you see. I will declare one more method something like public static void m2 here bracket open bracket close console dot right line off here I want to print I am m2 so I declared two methods but here one important point is the written type of the delegate and the methods both must be same and the parameters of the delegate and the method both must be same here no parameters so for all the methods also you must not declare any parameter here void so all the methods that are invoking by the delegate must be declared as void. If you give void and int, it will not work. In that case, you can create another delegate. Now, I want to add. If you want to add multiple methods to a single delegate object, you can use plus is equals to operator. OBJ plus is equals to new my delegate. New my delegate of, again you create, pass the method name M2. Now, here if you observe clearly, here one object is created. Here one object is created. Is it clear? And uh, here one more object is created. Is it clear? Now here M1 is there, here M2 is there. At runtime what will happen? These two objects will consider as single object. That is the power of delegate actually. So the name given for that object is what? OBJ. 
So you can access the multiple methods that are available in both the objects by using what? Delegate object name. Is it clear? So press F5, check the output. That is how you can work with the delegate. For example, here if you try to pass any parameter, something like int x, comma, int y, at the time of creating the method also you have to pass what? Parameters. And here also you have to pass what? Parameters. Int x, comma, int y. That's what I told. What is the difference between delegates and overloading? Overloading means defining multiple methods with same name, but with different parameters. Delegate means defining multiple methods with different name, but with same parameters. This is a powerful question interview. Now at the time of invoking the delegate object, you can pass both the values, 6, 5. So here both the values are passed to the delegate and delegate is passing that values to the methods. I hope you understood. This is how you can work with delegates, with parameters. Is it clear? But the problem with the delegate is what is the purpose of the method? The purpose of the method is to perform a specific operation. For example, I have one method called addition, one more method called subtraction, one more method called multiplication, one more method called division. Generally, if you consider your ASP.NET here, I have add button, sub button, mul button and div button. So whenever user clicks on add button, I want to execute this method. When user clicks on sub button, I want to execute this method. And which method must get executed was uh, depending on the user interaction. Because the purpose of the method is to perform a specific operation. But what this delegate is doing, this delegate is invoking what? All the methods at a time. With single delegate reference, we can invoke what? All the methods. But the purpose of the method is to perform a specific operation. I want to deposit the amount in the bank. Deposit is one type of operation. Withdraw is one type of operation. Check balance is one type of operation. Um, change password is one type of operation but uh, these all are multiple methods but what the delegate is doing delegate is invoking all the methods if I want to deposit it is depositing withdrawing and all the operations it will perform that is not the right way of programming so I want to invoke a specific method depending on my requirement in that case I can go for the concept of what event I'll go for what event event is a special data member of a class Events are the time periods which are intimate to what? Delegate. So delegate will invoke what? Methods. Finally, who will invoke the methods means delegate only. Is it clear? If, you are, if there is no event, what is the problem? This delegate will call what? All the methods. But the purpose of the delegate uh, method is to perform a specific operation. So now this event will intimate to delegate. You go and call what? This method. Similarly, you create one more event. And this event will intimate to what? Same delegate, you go and call this method. That is the purpose of event. So events are used to intimate to delegate that which method must get executed. Now I want to create an event. Syntax to create an event is create an event. Create an event. The syntax is public static. I want to create a static event. Static event. Delegate name, my delegate. Event name, event1. And I want to create one more event. For every method, I will create a separate event. Public, static, event, delegate name, my delegate, event name, event 2. So I created two events. I already explained you the purpose of event is event will intimate to delegate that which method must get executed. Otherwise, when whenever you try to invoking the delegate object, this delegate is invoking all the methods. But the purpose of the event is to perform a specific operation. So as a developer, we need to intimate to the event that which, uh, uh, that which method must get executed. That code also we need to mention. So for that, you can write something like this. You can write something like this. Event name plus is equals to new delegate name. Delegate name of method name. Method name. And you are telling to the event, whenever this event is fired, you this event will intimate to delegate. This delegate will call this method. So I have two methods, so I created two events. So how to write that one? What is my event name? Event1 plus is equals to new my delegate, new delegate name of method name. What is the method name? M1. Similarly, I will write event2 plus is equals to new delegate name of, I will try to pass what? M2. Are you following? So here I will try to invoke the method1. So you can call the event. And method2 if you want to call, event2 you can call. And here if you observe clearly, I have one delegate is there and two events are there. I created two events. One is what? Event 1. This is 
event 1 and here I have one more event, event 2. This is two events are there and here I have one delegate. The name of the delegate is my delegate and here I have one method. The name of the method is m1 and here I have one more method m2. Now whenever you call the event 1 off, then this event will intimate to delegate and this delegate will invoke what methods? Method 1 only, not method 2. Whenever you call event 2, this event will intimate to delegate and this delegate will call what? Method 2. So, only a specific method uh, will invoke press F5 and check the output I am M1. If you want to invoke method 2, you can go for, you can call the event 2. And finally, who is invoking the methods means delegate is invoking what? The methods. Delegates are used to invoke what? Method. I hope you understood. Delegate is a reference pointer to a method. Delegates are used to invoke what? Uh, methods. Are you following? If, if there is no event, what is the problem here is? The um, delegate will invoke what? All the methods. So, uh, this delegate is a very beautiful concept which is used to develop the event driven programming in .NET. In .NET also, if you consider in your ASP.NET, you have one button. You have one button. Now, what is happening here? Whenever user clicks on button, an event will fire actually. But we will simply double click on the button and write the code. Here, an event will fire. The name of the event is click. And this event will internally invoke one delegate. Something like some event handler delegate. And this delegate will invoke this method. So, the name of the method is button1 underscore click. Many people will tell button1 underscore click is actually it is a method a event. No, it is actually a method. Event is the click is the event name. Button1 underscore click is method. You can ask me sir, what is the difference between event and method means? Method will not, uh, must have written type. Event does not have any written type. Are you following everyone? I hope you understood. Method will have written type, at least void. Event does not have any written type. Is it clear? And in future classes, Microsoft has introduced a lot of different topics like anonymous methods, lambda expressions, predicate delegate, func delegate, genetic delegates. These all are very beautiful concepts which are used to reduce the complexity of the code, which are used to reduce the complexity of the methods. That uh, in the next session we'll discuss about uh, what are anonymous types and anonymous methods, and uh, slowly we can enter into what link and entity framework. Before going to link and entity framework, you must have some basic knowledge, like some advanced C sharp concepts are required, like some collections are required, genetics are required, delegates, events, anonymous methods, anonymous types, lambda expressions. These all topics are required so that we can easily work with link and entity framework. I hope you understood. For more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook group. Thank you. Have a nice day.